A new report has given insight into how vulnerable people living with disabilities can actually be prone to gender-based violence. Now, uh, the Tlanganisa Institute for Development in Southern Africa released the document in Johannesburg yesterday, and it provides recommendations for possible and appropriate responses at community level to the scourge. And to tell us more about it, we're joined by Bongiwe Ndondo, who's uh, the executive director at the Institute. Thanks so much for coming through this morning. Thank you for having me, Sakina, and good morning to your viewers. So when things, uh, one, when one thinks about uh, just uh, the abuse of vulnerable people, um, you know, be they women, be they children, uh, that thought is just so much exacerbated when you add disability uh, to that particular cocktail. So talk to us about where you actually started with your compilation of this report. Yeah. Thanks, Akin, and thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk about the report. So, um, Laganisa generally works with gender-based violence, and um, especially at community level, so we try and strengthen the response to gender-based violence at community level. But what was obvious in the work that, ha- that we, we were doing at the time was that women are not a homogeneous group. You know, there's women with differentiated needs, and we've got to have differentiated programming. And disability was one of the... Intersection, uh, um, intersectional, intersectional issues affecting gender-based violence. So we undertook a study to understand the risk factors for disabled women and um, what, makes them, um, what makes their vulnerability um, you know, so heightened and to also look at how we can work with organizations on the ground to improve um, you know, um, a, a, you know, and, and, and get their programs to be more responsive to the needs of these women. I must say, I'm I'm particularly uh, pleased by the fact that you did hone in on uh, people with disabilities in this particular regard because not much is uh, written about it. You know, we hear stories anecdotally from time to time. Uh, But, you know, as per your research, can you share with us just some of, you know, the more harrowing accounts that you may have encountered? I think, uh, you know, just, um, just to frame the conversation, Um, There's a lot of things we take for granted and um, stuff like access to information for you and I, you know, uh, we take that for granted. And yet for for a blind person, you know, they can't access that information unless it's available in a format, you know, that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, that is uh, accessible to them in Braille. For somebody who is deaf, we we don't do enough in terms of, you know, um, you know, providing preventive, preventative messages around, um, you know, in formats that they can understand and relate to. But beyond that, what was clear in the research is that a lot of communities and families in general don't understand disability. And the default position is to isolate people with disability. And because there's so much stigma in our communities, they tend to be isolated and neglected. So um, often, they, you know, young, young children with disability don't get access to, the, in, um, you know, to special schools, schools that can help them and be responsive to their needs. But also, adults with disability tend to be locked up during the day whilst family gets around doing what they have to do. And that increases their level of vulnerability because, you know, your, 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 your predators actually then pounce on them in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in those moments of isolation. But beyond that, what the study tells us is that the disability itself tends to be a, a, a very um, important risk factor, you know, for abuse. If you're blind and you're sexually abused, you're, se- you're raped, um, when, when you go to the courts, the first thing they'll ask you is, can you identify the victim, you know? Is it some, was he wearing a, a gray shirt, you know, a, a blue jacket? Does he have a mustache? And all those things don't take into consideration that women with disability, you know, are not able to access um, the justice system as it is. You look at uh, women with mental disability even. When they are violated, when they are raped, um, you know, and they have to go to court, the courts consider them, you know, Un, uh, unreliable witnesses. So whatever story they're telling or putting on the table is actually not listened to. And I think for a long time, we as society have ignored the plight of disabled women. And it's time that we start looking at the things that affect all members of our society and look at how we can be responsive to their needs. One of the things that was really um, heartbreaking is some of their 
um, abuses that people with albinism face, you know. Uh, people with albinism are trafficked, you know, and sexually exploited because there's this belief that if you have sex with somebody uh, with albinism, um, they'll cure you of some disease or the other, or you might be lucky and if you have a, a pending trial in court, you might, you know, uh, you might be let off, you know, just by, um, you know, having sex with somebody with albinism. So there are... Um, they are trafficked, you know, they are killed, you know, so that people can harvest their body parts, which are, uh, which is normally, you know, the sexual organs, which are associated with a lot of myths and rituals. Absolutely devastating. We're out of time, but if you could just briefly talk to us about some of your recommendations uh, from that stem from this report. I think um, the recommendations are twofold. So I think at the level of society and, you know, just families in general, we need to start engaging with the issue of disability and trying to understand what disability is and trying to integrate better um, you know, uh, people with living with disability into our communities. And, um, and even those that we take to institutions of care, you know, we need to look at what's happening within those institutions of care because our research also tells us that a lot of the abuse is actually perpetrated by caregivers. So we also need to be examining what's happening in those institutions of care. And lastly, I think government needs to come to the party. You know, government needs to start looking at the special needs of disabled uh, persons um, uh, and, and especially as it relates to access to justice in our in our criminal justice um, system. Well, Bongiwe, thanks so much uh, for stopping by uh, Bongiwe and Dondo and uh, really an eye-opening discussion this morning. Uh, so much more to be done and said around this particular matter and uh, just to take away from that conversation uh, the fact that those who are meant to look after the vulnerable and people with disabilities ignore them but they're not ignored by the perverts in our society. Let's go to a break.